<coughs> okay, uh, uh, today's lecture is going to be uh, uh, cells and uh, organs of the uh, immune system. So uh, we are going to talk about uh, the types of cells that they, uh, formulate uh, the uh, uh, immune system uh, and their uh, function. It's like uh, uh, the anatomy uh, as well as the physiology of cells that are involved in the uh, immune system. Okay, these are the uh, main uh, uh, objectives uh, of this uh, slide. We'll, we'll be uh, talking about uh, the developmental uh, milestones from uh, the uh, uh, cells that are involved in the uh, immune system. Okay, so here we will uh, we'll talk about uh, the uh, uh, anatomy of the uh, cells and tissues of the uh, immune system. Always we talk about what we call uh, primary lymphoid organs and uh, uh, the secondary uh, uh, lymphoid organs. The uh, primary lymphoid organs uh, they form uh, here mainly the thymus gland and the bone marrow, and this is where the uh, uh, the lymphoid cells they are originating, and then those them they will uh, 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 develop uh, into the uh, B and the T cells. The B and the T cells that they will go from the primary lymphoid organs into the uh, secondary lymphoid organs. So uh, I want you to remember that we are talking about primary lymphoid organs, uh, which is the bone marrow uh, and the thymus gland and then secondary lymphoid organs, and here we are talking about uh, uh, the uh, lymph nodes and uh, plus spleen mainly, and uh, others we will we, we'll talk about them. And so here when we talk about the uh, uh, cells and tissues of the immune system, we said that we are going to talk about primary lymphoid organs and uh, secondary lymphoid organs. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, uh, bone marrow, it, it, it has uh, uh, compartments that usually are uh, interconnected uh, uh, by uh, tissues uh, and um, uh, lymphoid cells are present within these uh, compartments. Uh, so very important to know that we have primary, which is the uh, origin. Uh, here and then the secondary uh, lymphoid organs and you, know, you have to know uh, these uh, types of cells that they form these uh, compartments. So uh, the, uh, uh, the milestones or the uh, development uh, of the immune system starts uh, from the uh, yolk sac and then after that uh, the uh, fetal liver uh, and uh, after that uh, the uh, spleen uh, uh, and then the uh, bone marrow uh, uh, and then the thymus uh, gland. This is the developmental stages of our uh, uh, the immune system. The secondary lymphoid uh, uh, organs uh, here, uh, those who are the uh, lymphoid cells usually they go and uh, they hide and then those are the cells that are used by our immune system for uh, Defense of the, uh, 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 the uh, lymph uh, uh, nodes and uh, the spleen and the glucose and associated lymphoid tissue uh, and the uh, skin. Those all are secondary lymphoid organs, where the primary lymphoid organs uh, they go and then they uh, hide. Uh, uh, these uh, secondary lymphoid organ uh, cells that are present in those uh, phases, they uh, must stay on their uh, uh, location, they uh, recirculate, and the recirculation is extremely important, so they will be exposed to a very large number of uh, antigens, so the immunity is going to be uh, covered. So it's so important for you to know that these uh, uh, lymphocytes, 
that are going to be stored in the secondary lymphoid organs and they keep circulating uh, here among our the secondary lymphoid tissue so they can uh, meet uh, their antigenic uh, uh, counterparts. So uh, there are certain uh, areas we call them that we are immunologically uh, privileged uh, uh, sites that we do not have uh, here secondary lymphoid organs and so also uh, which we don't have uh, lymphocytes and uh, which we do not uh, 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 react against uh, foreign antigens so we are immunologically uh, energy set. So uh, uh, this is uh, also a uh, summary of uh, uh, our primary and uh, secondary lymphoid organs where the uh, primary is the main uh, origin of our uh, uh, immune system and the secondary uh, the uh, cells where they go and uh, hide primary and secondary lymphoid tissue. Uh, so the primary, we are talking about the uh, thymus gland and uh, also uh, we talk about the bone marrow of the bone marrow and the thymus gland are uh, the primary lymphoid organs and in the secondary lymphoid organ we are talking about uh, uh, lymph nodes uh, here and then we talk about the spleen uh, and then the bronchus associated uh, lymphoid tissue tonsils for example uh, lymphoid follicles in, in, in general uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, pirate's patches of the gastrointestinal uh, tract and also bronchus associated lymphoid tissue. So those secondary lymphoid organs then are distributed uh, all over uh, our body. So the uh, first primary lymphoid organ, which is the most important lymphoid organ in our body as primary lymphoid, is the bone marrow. And we know that the bone marrow uh, is the uh, 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 major uh, hematopoietic uh, uh, organ uh, in uh, humans. And you know that where the uh, original uh, all hematopoietic cells, they uh, come through red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and so on. They come from the uh, bone marrow. Uh, so all blood types then they originate in the uh, bone marrow, including of course uh, the B and the T cells that you know. Uh, the uh, uh, original cells uh, that they originate in the bone marrow, we call them uh, the B cell uh, the progenitors, and then they will develop into what we call uh, immature uh, uh, B cells, and then uh, uh, they will develop into mature uh, B cells and then plasma cells and antibodies to uh, develop. Uh, in order for this process uh, to take place, uh, uh, then we need uh, what we call uh, the growth factors and cytokines that also are produced uh, in the uh, bone marrow. So it's so important to know that, that these uh, the growth factors and cytokines uh, they play a major role in the uh, development and uh, formation of uh, the uh, uh, lymphoid cells in, in, in our body. The uh, different um, uh, compartments of the uh, bone marrow, uh, usually uh, uh, they are uh, divided by a tissue, we call it the uh, reticular uh, formation. So this is where different compartments uh, uh, they are. Uh, so this is a uh, histology uh, cross-section of the uh, uh, bone marrow uh, uh, showing the uh, uh, bone trabeculae uh, here as the uh, major uh, anatomical uh, uh, barrier in the uh, bone marrow and then the uh, stromal tissue uh, inside and uh, here, these uh, small uh, compartments, and uh, here they form the uh, fatty 
these cells that are uh, at present in the bone marrow, so on the bone marrow and uh, lots of uh, fat uh, cells beside the hematopoietic cells that they form the origin of all hematopoietic uh, uh, cells in our body. So we get back to the primary fold organ, the bone marrow, and the thymus gland. The thymus gland, second primary fold organ, it's a uh, bilobe uh, uh, here uh, organ has means in it, it has two uh, lobes by uh, default. Uh, it usually is located in the uh, anterior mediastinum. Uh, um, this is uh, where the heart usually is uh, located, or the anterior part of the uh, chest. Uh, what's going to happen if we remove the uh, thymus uh, gland? Usually, the thymus gland, uh, when uh, the baby is born, usually uh, it, it is uh, uh, completely uh, functional and continuous uh, for a while. So uh, after the baby is born, if we remove the thymus, usually not that much is, is going uh, uh, to happen uh, compared if we remove the thymus gland, for example, in the uh, early uh, development of the uh, uh, baby. So it's very important to know these uh, important uh, uh, points, primary and fold organs, anything happens to them, the patient is going to be uh, severely uh, immune uh, com uh, compromised. So uh, the uh, uh, the uh, thymus gland usually uh, develops from the uh, uh, third uh, pharyngeal uh, pouch in uh, in the uh, So the uh, subcapsular zone, the capsular zone, and then the medulla. Here, the uh, earliest uh, uh, progenitor cells will, will develop in the subcapsular zone and then we go into the cortex and then into the medulla after that. These are the developmental milestones of, of the thymus uh, gland. Uh, so uh, in the medulla, usually the mature cells here that they develop in the cortex, they will go and they will be uh, stored over there. Uh, so uh, the uh, mature T cells usually we see them uh, in the medulla, the immature or underdevelopment usually in the uh, cortex. So uh, the uh, uh, primary then uh, uh, side of uh, T cell uh, uh, development is usually in the uh, thymus gland. So it's extremely important. Uh, to know uh, this uh, fact. If you look into the thymus gland, you will see that um, uh, around 95% uh, of uh, uh, T cells are the progenitor cells. So a bulk of cells that will develop in the thymus are T cells. Why? Because the T cell, uh, they have a, a dual function and um, differentiating the uh, T cells as well as the uh, B cells. So the thymus gland is extremely important in this uh, developmental milestones. Okay, so uh, in the uh, thymus gland and the uh, 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 development, whether it's in the uh, cortex, in the medulla, usually uh, the uh, uh, progenitor cells uh, that they get in the uh, cortex, as they move into the medulla, Usually they will uh, mature, and the minute that they will get into the medulla completely, then uh, they are going to have uh, more uh, uh, what we call a, a selection process. And the selection process here, we mean by that, is just uh, having the uh, fully functional uh, lymphocytes, who are, for example, a uh, uh, T helper cells or T cytotoxic cell. This is uh, here the selection process. So the T cells that uh, they develop in the thymus gland goes through a, a process of what we call uh, selection process starting uh, from the cortex uh, growing into the medulla. And those cells uh, uh, that are not selected, usually they will be uh, 
behavior uh, or what you call the apoptosis and the effect uh, of those uh, uh, in the, uh, 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 during this uh, uh, process. Uh, so this process of uh, what we call the program uh, same uh, death, we call it uh, uh, apoptosis. So as the cells move from the cortex uh, into the medulla, most of them uh, feel that they don't have uh, a function or the point that they are programmed cell death. We call that uh, uh, apoptosis. Okay, now for the secondary lymphoid organs, then we have uh, the, what we call the uh, lymph nodes, uh, as well as the spleen and the mucosa associated uh, lymphoid organ. The secondary lymphoid organ uh, cells that they come from the primary, they go usually and get stored in the secondary lymphoid organ where they will meet uh, uh, here the uh, foreign cells or bacteria, viruses, and the battleground usually occurs in the secondary lymphoid organ. So we see them, they enlarge in size uh, uh, here following the uh, uh, immune response. So you, when you look into, for example, a cross-section of a uh, lymph node, the outer uh, layer, layer we call it the uh, cortical uh, area, uh, and the one behind after that we call it the paracortical area, and then we have the medulla uh, after that. So in the cortical area, this is where uh, the uh, selection is going to take place, and in the medulla, is where those uh, they come out from the cortical area, and then they will be uh, uh, stored after that. Uh, within the lymph node, the first interaction uh, that will uh, uh, develop uh, here the aggregates uh, uh, in the cortex, so we call it a germinal center. And the first uh, 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 here aggregates, we call it a primary uh, uh, follicle. Uh, uh, and then when the patient is exposed for the second time, a uh, second uh, here center will develop, we call it uh, a uh, secondary follicle, uh, uh, indicates that the patient as uh, exposed to the antigen for the uh, second time. So the primary follicle and secondary follicle. Primary first time exposure and secondary follicle uh, second time uh, exposure where they do have uh, the uh, B cells uh, uh, involved in a uh, uh, lymph node. For a lymph node area, then we have uh, the B cell area within the uh, uh, cortex. And in the middle line, we have the B and T cells uh, mixture that they are going to be stored in there. Uh, uh, we have to remember that when an infection is taking place or cancer, those are going to enlarge, and we call that uh, lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the lymph node. And when you have an acute infection, especially with uh, bacteria, then those uh, lymph nodes are uh, painful. And when usually, uh, a transformation is taking place or cancer, they, they are painless. Uh, so this is very important clinically to differentiate between uh, here the enlargement of the lymph nodes regarding uh, acute infection, bacteria, viruses in particular, uh, and uh, with transformation, formation of uh, cancer cells that usually are uh, painless in general. Okay, so uh, the secondary then uh, uh, lymphoid uh, uh, organs, uh, we talk about the lymph nodes as well as the uh, spleen, and uh, those usually uh, uh, where uh, the uh, uh, lymphoid cells that they come from the primary lymphoid uh, uh, organ, they will get stored in the secondary lymphoid organs, so uh, uh, they will need their antigenic uh, uh, counterparts. So the uh, area of the battleground usually is taken care of in the, uh, the secondary lymphoid organs. So usually uh, uh, in case of an infection, we see them they enlarge. So lymph nodes, they enlarge, we call that lymphadenopathy. When the spleen is then enlarged, we call that uh, splenomegaly. And then infection, acute infection, usually they are uh, painful. 
and uh, it, it is transformed, or in, uh, many pronunciations usually they are uh, uh, pink as well. Enlargement usually is the main feature when we have infection or uh, uh, cancer in, 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 in particular. So those are usually uh, uh, arranged uh, in uh, our body, all over our body, and usually around the uh, major uh, vessels. And uh, when you go to the hospital, you will learn how to examine uh, those and where those are uh, located, the, the cervical area, for example, the axillary area, the inguinal area, and so on. And you will learn how to test for uh, the enlargement of the uh, lymph nodes and which area that they will drain, the anatomical area they will uh, uh, drain. So this is very, very uh, important to know the locations uh, then in our body, axillary, uh, for example, occipital, uh, inguinal, and so on. You, you should know the location of those uh, lymph nodes uh, aggregates. And their functions, this is where secondary lymphoid uh, cells, they will be stored in order to meet uh, uh, the uh, uh, pathogens uh, or the antigens, uh, foreign antigens in, in, in our body and to clear them. So like they, uh, they act as filters, very massively and as simple as uh, uh, that. So the structure of those then uh, we, we can see in a, a cortical area, cortex and medulla, and area in between we call it the paracortical uh, area. And you should know uh, that the uh, uh, cell location in those cortical area, uh, usually the uh, B cell, a paracortical area, the uh, T cells in the medulla, the B and the T cells usually where they are uh, 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 located. And we could see macrophages as well uh, uh, over there, so they can uh, here interact as an antigen presenting cells uh, to the BLP that is in the present. On the vessels that uh, they come out of uh, these uh, uh, lymph nodes, uh, uh, the ones that they will pass in uh, home in circulation and recirculation. We call them the high endothelial venue. And those there you have receptors, we'll talk about those uh, uh, later, and how home uh, and uh, circulation or recirculation are taking place in the high uh, endothelial uh, venues and how they can pass from one area uh, into uh, uh, another and, uh, and so on. So uh, it, it is so important to know uh, uh, then. What do we mean by uh, uh, lymphadenopathy? That means enlargement of the lymph nodes and which lymph node compartment to enlarge. So it means which area, uh, anatomical area that they are draining, that means the infection or the cancer is taking place in that particular area. Okay, the uh, second, uh, secondary, uh, important secondary lymphoid organ uh, is the spleen. Uh, where uh, in the, uh, the spleen, uh, usually its main function is the uh, uh, destruction of uh, old or senile uh, red blood cells uh, uh, in our uh, body. But uh, the spleen also uh, here is a storage of uh, the uh, uh, white blood cells uh, in general in, in, in our uh, body. And uh, it, it holds around 20% of the white uh, uh, blood cells uh, in, in our body. And the same thing here, if the patient has an infection, uh, then it's going to enlarge, and we call that uh, splenomegaly. Or if the patient has malignancies, uh, as well, it's going to enlarge. Uh, usually the spleen is not uh, uh, palpable, normally and it cannot palpate. But if it is infected, or it has uh, 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 malignant cells in general, then it's going to be palpated. Uh, uh, it's uh, like a uh, uh, pinched uh, fist, uh, like a, a small pinched uh, uh, hand. Uh, 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 just uh, its uh, uh, size, and uh, the 
because it contains lots of blood if it is uh, injured, uh, then the patient could uh, lose uh, uh, lots of uh, 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 blood. So it's so important if no uh, if the spleen is enlarged or uh, not, and uh, if the spleen uh, got uh, injured in, in, in surgery uh, or uh, uh, not. Very important uh, to know about the uh, uh, spleen as a uh, secondary lymphoid uh, organ. And if you have a cross section in the uh, spleen, uh, you can see uh, where the uh, lymphoid tissue is present, and we call that a white hole, and uh, the, uh, where the uh, peripheral cell areas are connected, and we call that the uh, red pulp, so either white pulp or uh, red uh, pulp of the uh, spleen. So uh, the spleen uh, can be taken out uh, here in, in certain types of uh, diseases, especially if the patient is having uh, cancer or certain uh, pathological uh, disorder and so on. Uh, so you, you can have uh, spleen actually you can take the spleen out uh, of your uh, body. Okay, so uh, uh, this is also uh, a, uh, a sketch uh, showing the different anatomical uh, sides of the uh, uh, spleen, and you can see that uh, uh, it has a, a sheet or cover outside uh, where uh, sometimes it gets injured and uh, it could uh, lose blood uh, when you have a trauma uh, to the spleen and it has to be taken out because lots of bleeding uh, come out of uh, that. So you can see that as uh, uh, arteries and blood vessels inside, and you, you can uh, see uh, general centers, primary and secondary. Uh, there is like a uh, lymph node, uh, the same thing. And uh, also you have what you call the marginal zone, uh, which is the area between the uh, white pulp and the uh, red pulp uh, there. So just uh, it looks like uh, a uh, lymph uh, node. In the body and a secondary uh, lymphoid organ. Uh, so uh, remember that the spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ, uh, can be enlarged uh, when you have infection or malignancy, and in certain hematological disorders, it is enlarged as well, and you can take it out. If it's a trauma, it has to be taken out. So we call that uh, uh, spleen. So uh, again, uh, this is a summary of the uh, spleen, where the spleen is uh, uh, located. It's located in the left uh, coast and the margin. This is important. So uh, you have to know when uh, a patient gets a blow to the left coastal margin, you could have a full age of the uh, spleen. And it's the function of the spleen. And I can say it's a secondary lymphoid organ where uh, White blood cells and red blood cells usually are stored uh, in the uh, spleen in the middle side for destruction of old uh, red blood uh, uh, cells. And its structure has a uh, sheet outside, uh, cortex and uh, umbrella, uh, like we said, uh, like a, a, a lymph node, uh, primary follicles, secondary follicles as well. As well. And also very important here to know about the uh, red pulp, which is the uh, red blood cell area, and the white pulp, uh, in green, uh, looking like this is where the white blood cells are uh, stored. You can see around 25% of the uh, lymphocytes of our body are stored in the spleen. So, a very large number of uh, lymphocytes are stored in the spleen. That's why when they do research on animals and so on, if you want to do, uh, 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 you have to take lymphocytes, you go to the spleen of the animal and uh, get the uh, lymphocytes out of the, uh, the, the spleen. Uh, uh, also, the uh, uh, spleen uh, contains what we call 
very arteriolar uh, lymphoid uh, sheath. Uh, this is where you can uh, see the uh, uh, lymphocytes are being stored. And uh, you can see uh, the uh, primary uh, and the uh, secondary follicles like the lymph node, the uh, primary follicle. Uh, this is where infection is taking place first time, so collection of white blood cells and secondary follicle here of the germinal center when infection uh, is taken care of for the second uh, time. And those, uh, they have lots of uh, memory, memory uh, cells. And the marginal zone area is the area uh, that usually separates the white bulb from the uh, left bulb, we call that the marginal zone area. Uh, um, Here, the uh, spleen is exposed uh, here to different types of uh, uh, antigens you uh, uh, get enlarged. Uh, for example, what's going to happen if it gets exposed to, uh, for example, the polysaccharide uh, antigens, uh, where, uh, for example, now we call them the virus independent uh, antigens, and sometimes they uh, responded into that or into what we call thymus dependent uh, areas where they require help of the uh, lymphocyte. So what I want you to know is that uh, the spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ like a lymph node can be enlarged when you have infection. It has the red bulb uh, and the white bulb like a lymph node uh, almost contains lots of uh, lymphocytes uh, that you can uh, uh, here use for uh, research and uh, for uh, when infection is taking place in general. And, uh, uh, this slide uh, talks about uh, a clinical case about uh, a, a, a patient who got uh, uh, a spleen injury uh, following a, a road traffic accident. Usually, it has to do with the uh, uh, a seat belt injury when a uh, patient goes through uh, a, a road traffic uh, accident and how patients usually they uh, bleed and then we have to take the uh, spleen out uh, as I said or if uh, uh, the patients uh, get what we call a splenectomy then the patient becomes more susceptible to infection by uh, uh, encapsulated bacteria like Streptococcus uh, pneumonia or uh, Haemophilus uh, influenza. So those patients, then they have to take uh, vaccines against these types of bacteria, so they won't be uh, uh, infected. So remember that uh, selectomized patients, uh, luckily they are uh, immunocompromised and uh, they have to be uh, vaccinated here uh, uh, against encapsulated bacteria. So the uh, encapsulated bacteria usually is causing the problem in those uh, parts of uh, or these types of uh, infections. So we, we are still uh, on the uh, mucosa associated uh, lymphoid uh, uh, organs and how those uh, they could uh, contain uh, 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 lymphocytes, so even the mucosal tissue, they could contain uh, uh, the uh, protective uh, uh, cells uh, in general to our body. And the most common antibody that is involved uh, in uh, the mucosal tissue is the IgA uh, antibodies. It has two types of IgA, IgA1 and 2. And some of them could be in traffic D, for it IgA uh, antibodies. So the um, mucous membranes in general and tissues that is involved, uh, they can provide uh, a protection here uh, into uh, uh, humans that uh, 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 here uh, against uh, infections to uh, mucous.
customer of the brain's engine. And we will be talking about so many uh, uh, microorganisms that are involved uh, in the uh, infection to uh, mucosa lining of uh, uh, tissues uh, as time will come. But the most important message here to know uh, that the intraepithelial uh, uh, lymphocytes and antibodies they can provide uh, uh, protection uh, here in, in, in general uh, against uh, infections. So uh, I, again, then we will uh, continue talking about the uh, mucosa-associated uh, uh, lymphoid tissue and how uh, this tissue can provide uh, defense and uh, protection to our uh, system and where these mucosa uh, are present uh, either in the respiratory tract or in the uh, uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. Uh, so on both the GI tract as well as the respiratory tract, the tonsils, uh, for example, and the adenoids, you have uh, aggregates of uh, lymphoid tissue that can provide us with uh, protection against uh, an infectious uh, uh, process. Uh, so we have the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, like for example the pile patches that's present in the GI tract, uh, also, and we have specialized cells, we call them M cells. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, can provide the protection and those sometimes uh, can be responsible for uh, infection through the uh, uh, GI tract. The most important antibody that provides protection to the mucosal tissues in the membrane is the IgA antibody. And we see that we have two types of IgA, IgA1 and IgA2, uh, secretory, for example, or uh, the mucoid in general, and um, uh, those that can provide protection as first line of defense uh, against infection uh, uh, in general. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, these uh, IgA antibodies uh, in general and um, uh, here protection to mucosal surfaces can provide us with what we call uh, oral uh, uh, tolerance. That means uh, uh, here exposure. Uh, to these types of uh, 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 um, antigens, it sometimes might uh, produce special types of uh, lymphocytes that are going to suppress the immune system and does not uh, uh, produce any uh, 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 hypersensitivity types of reactions, what we call uh, oral uh, tolerance tolerance that does not respond uh, to an uh, and uh, again, uh, 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 then we are still talking about uh, the, um, the, the mucosa uh, 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 lymphocytes and how those they can provide protection for uh, tolerance. Some of the lymphocytes that are present within the mucosa lining, we call them uh, intra-epithelial uh, uh, lymphocytes, not just for uh, protection, but also of what we call uh, tolerance. And uh, more than 90% uh, 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 of those are uh, lymphocytes. The bulk of those are of the CD8 and gamma delta type. And the CD8 uh, uh, here, gamma delta type, those what we call the suppressor uh, uh, T lymphocyte. That means uh, those, uh, they uh, induce what we call uh, tolerance. Uh, they will not induce an immune type of a, a reaction. So well, we call that a, 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 a limited uh, a diversity. Those they don't they, they don't have that many different types of uh, uh, epitopes or receptors. That means we don't want them to respond uh, uh, here to so many uh, antigens, and we want them to induce what we call uh, uh, tolerance and. Uh, uh, they have a, uh, a, a, a direct uh, antigen uh, recognition uh, uh, here, and uh, there is no need for major histocompatibility antigen. And we will see that the major histocompatibility antigen uh, usually is needed uh, to induce an immune response. And if you want to induce uh, tolerance, so uh, here 
uh, the amount of major histo compatibility antigens are much, much uh, uh, less. Uh, also, uh, uh, here we, we see that uh, uh, they uh, secrete certain types of uh, substances, we call them uh, cytokines, uh, uh, that uh, they uh, cause uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, immune suppression uh, or tolerance, and this is needed. Uh, so we will not uh, respond uh, to uh, food particles. So when we eat, we don't want our immune system to react against the uh, food particle. So uh, our immune system produces a cytokine that will suppress the uh, immune reaction uh, here at the mucosal level. So we will not, uh, and if there's a failure to this process, then patients uh, could develop uh, uh, food uh, uh, allergies. So uh, this is important for what we call oral uh, uh, tolerance. So the significance of uh, having uh, an immune suffusion uh, at the mucosal level is to develop what we call oral uh, tolerance and uh, prevent uh, food allergy and uh, generally. Uh, in the GI tract, we do have a mucosal uh, tissue that is uh, full of lymphocytes, also can provide uh, here defense against uh, foreign uh, uh, here, uh, invaders, we call it uh, virus patches and M cells, uh, where sometimes the uh, microorganisms could uh, go through that, especially uh, here somewhere in Latakia, for example. So this is very important uh, for you to know. So it's so important then to know that at the uh, mucosal level, now we could uh, uh, here uh, uh, develop uh, an immune response against uh, foreign uh, invaders, and we do have a collection of lymphoid uh, tissue called uh, pyrus patches that can provide us with uh, protection, uh, as well as. Uh, uh, tolerance, as we said, against the uh, food particle. So uh, uh, here when we talk about uh, uh, lymphocyte uh, trafficking uh, from one part uh, into another, this is extremely uh, important uh, to know that uh, lymphocytes can go from one anatomical area into another, uh, uh, providing protection to the uh, second uh, anatomical area and uh, uh, so on. So in the uh, different uh, uh, lymphoid collections that are uh, present within the mucosal tissue, those lymphocytes could be uh, transferred from one anatomical area into another uh, in order to provide uh, here uh, defense uh, or uh, tolerance as we said. So this, uh, we're still talking about the uh, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue and how uh, those they can provide, provide uh, uh, protection or uh, defense against uh, infections uh, in general. So the skin, usually we call it a physical uh, barrier here against uh, infection. Uh, and. Um, here, the cells that are present within the uh, uh, skin, we call them uh, dendritic uh, cells, and those are like uh, macrophages that they can present antigens uh, to lymphoid uh, cells uh, uh, in, in general. So the uh, epidermis uh, has, uh, well, the epidermis and the dermis are the two layers of the uh, skin, uh, they contain uh, many uh, macrophages, like we call them Langerhans cells, and for antigen presentation. So, when we do skin testing here, those are the Langerhans cells that they play a role in the antigen presentation. Uh, the T uh, cells that are present in the skin are mainly of the uh, 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 gamma delta type. Uh, so, the T cells uh, are the gamma delta, so they can. Uh, uh, have uh, an immune suppression and, and tolerance that they will not respond any, uh, uh, occasionally to uh, uh, that uh, many uh, uh, 
elbette bir stat artmak ümidi. The Gervis is full of macrophages. Macrophages they are antigen representing cells and T cells as well. So when we do a skin testing, here we have the antigen presenting cell and the lymphocytes that are present can induce an immune response that you can see in the skin as well. So the dermis plays a a uh, whole skin testing because of the macrophages uh, that they do have and the T cells as well that are present uh, in the uh, uh, skin. So uh, this is the sketch uh, uh, also explains what uh, we were uh, talking about, uh, uh, about uh, how the skin can play uh, a major role in uh, defense as a uh, physical uh, barrier, uh, the uh, keratin, for example, that's present uh, here makes the skin uh, uh, dry, for example, and provides uh, protection. And then you can see uh, uh, here the uh, lymphocytes, uh, intradermal uh, and epidermal, uh, as well as macrophages, here that they will play a role in the skin testing uh, that uh, uh, we keep uh, uh, doing in the skin. So uh, the uh, uh, epidermis as well as the dermis, lymphocytes and macrophages and Langerhans cells, all of those they play a major role in uh, defense and in skin testing as uh, we have talked about. Now, uh, this is a, a clinical case about a, a, a patient who has an uh, uh, an enlargement of uh, his uh, tonsils and um, how this patient uh, is getting uh, uh, scared uh, because uh, he has a history in the family of pharyngeal uh, uh, cancer. So it's so important to know you know, when you have uh, a uh, lymphadenopathy, uh, whether it is uh, a bacterial infection or a viral infection or a, a transformation or uh, uh, malignancies uh, and uh, uh, exactly as we said before if the tonsil has pus for example and pain we release bacteria if it is dry enlarged it's uh, uh, viral and if it's just uh, enlarged follicular and painless then it could be uh, a uh, malignant transformation. So it's so important uh, here to make a diagnosis of, this, of a patient who has a sore throat uh, ear infection or uh, uh, lymphadenopathy, uh, especially here uh, following a throat uh, type of infection. Uh, so uh, uh, here talking about the uh, uh, mucosal infections and uh, uh, a protection about against uh, microorganisms or bacterial uh, or uh, uh, viral uh, microorganisms uh, will give us the idea of uh, developing of what we call mucosal uh, uh, vaccine. It is so important to understand that here when you use this uh, mucosal uh, uh, vaccines, uh, the uh, lymphocytes that could uh, act against these uh, microorganisms, they could be transferred from one uh, anatomical area into another and uh, gives you uh, a protection uh, a against the uh, infectious uh, agent that is responsible uh, for such an infection. Uh, it is so important to uh, understand about this uh, mucosal vaccine and about uh, the uh, oral uh, tolerance that we have uh, uh, talked about where sometimes you could reduce tolerance by uh, here giving uh, what we call adjuvants uh, here uh, or large dose also uh, of the uh, uh, infectious agents and how uh, here you can uh, minimize uh, such an uh, infection by using these uh, oral vaccines. 
the idea here uh, that the uh, activated uh, lymphocytes against those uh, pathogens, they could be transfer uh, through the uh, mucosal uh, the lymphatic uh, vessels uh, from one anatomical site into another, uh, giving you protection uh, here uh, all over uh, your body. So this uh, uh, slide uh, uh, continues talking about the uh, trafficking uh, circulation and recirculation of uh, lymphocytes uh, providing uh, uh, effective uh, uh, protection uh, all over the body. So here, when you have an in, uh, infection at a uh, localized uh, uh, area, so the uh, uh, lymphocytes here, they could go from one anatomical area uh, into the other, so it, it can provide protection into the uh, other anatomical sites, so the whole body uh, will be uh, protected against uh, infection. So the message here, you know, that uh, those uh, lymphocytes, uh, they can uh, uh, have what we call trafficking from one anatomical area into another, providing the other area uh, with the protection uh, against infection in, in general. So this uh, slide here will uh, explain again uh, the homing, the trafficking and re-trafficking or re-homing of uh, 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 lymphocytes. So you can see that uh, when you have uh, a, a priming uh, uh, your body with an infection, that means that you do have lymphocytes here against that particular infectious agent that you are infected with, and how those uh, then they can uh, uh, travel from one anatomical area uh, into the other, providing uh, uh, a protection to the uh, second anatomical area. And the same thing applies here for uh, uh, vaccines, if you use live vaccine, and the circulation and recirculation uh, of uh, those uh, uh, lymphocytes uh, in your body, providing you with the prompt uh, uh, protection against these uh, infectious agents. Then uh, uh, again, here uh, talking about the uh, uh, lymphocyte uh, uh, trafficking and uh, uh, homing. And the uh, trafficking usually, as I said, they go from one anatomical area to another anatomical area uh, within uh, the body through the blood or through the uh, lymphatic uh, uh, system from the blood to the lymphatics back to the blood, lymphatics, homing, trafficking and new trafficking, blood tissue, uh, uh, lymphatic uh, uh, here system, and back into the uh, blood. And they could do that uh, once or even more than uh, one time in you know, trafficking. And the uh, idea behind that, why they do traffic, hopefully that they will meet their antigenic counterparts and so, so they could do more than one uh, 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 circuit uh, at a time, uh, hoping to increase the chance of finding lymphocytes that will provide you with the uh, protection. Uh, so most of the cells that they are going to encounter are T cells rather than B cells. Again, I know T cells are present in much, much more numbers compared to the B cells because the T cells, they have a dual function one that will affect T cells as well as B cells at the same time, including the helper, uh, for example, T suppressor, uh, effector cells, and so on. So you see more of T cells compared than to uh, B cells. Uh, the uh, cells, when it is uh, exposed, uh, uh, here on lymphocytes are exposed for the antigen for the first time, we call them naive cells. So naive cells, when they are uh, exposed, they will be uh, activated and no more that uh, they are uh, naive when they are exposed to the uh, antigen, then they will circulate and then they will develop what we call memory cells. So, the memory cells uh, are the ones that are exposed and then they change 
ready so uh, uh, the uh, waiting period uh, here for the uh, interaction will be much much uh, uh, less and the uh, uh, immune uh, response is going to be very very effective so uh, the homing and circulation and recirculation usually is mediated by uh, what we call adhesion molecules and those are present on the uh, lymphocyte uh, as well as uh, on the mucosa associated lymphoid organs uh, so they circulate and recirculate through these uh, adhesion uh, molecules and then uh, uh, they will perform the homing and the rehoming uh, process as we uh, said uh, so here uh, the uh, uh, naive cells and uh, the uh, lymphocytes uh, uh, then uh, we call that extravasation that means extravasation the, uh, the, the high endothelial venules that are uh, present the lymphocytes they adhere and then they will pass through the uh, cells of uh, the uh, uh, vessel we call that extravasation coming into the uh, allocated area and then uh, circulate and uh, recirculate hoping to find their antigenic uh, counterpart. 